just like me. I am so excited that my Jaybird is with me tonight to talk about joy. Now, I asked her to um, talk about joy. Let me get our watch party started here. Take 30. F-C-L-G. Yes. So I actually asked her to be on our uh, joy journey. This is day two of our fearless calendar journey. So for those of you who didn't log in yesterday, every month our fearless calendar takes a key principle about being fearless and puts it into action. And so it challenges us to look at what can we do that actually fosters a heart of fearlessness. And the month of April is joy. And I know I have been um, navigating having to be home, not being able to go out. Every event as an entrepreneur that I had scheduled for um, March and April got canceled. And at this point, we've been in this for a couple of weeks. My spirit just connected with when God says he will give us his joy so that our joy may be to the full. I said, you know what? I'm just going to lock in on our calendar chan challenge for April and get some people <laughs> to do the challenge with me. And yesterday at our five o'clock slot, people jumped on and just went for it. We saw pictures all evening of how people took 30 minutes for themselves to do something that brings joy, to shift a mindset. And so I asked Jay Bird if she would come on today and talk about how as a college student, she is navigating this whole journey of being home, of being in the house, of but staying so positive. So I wanna give you one more thing before she starts talking. Since she was a toddler, and I know we've got people on here who have known her since she was a toddler, LK. Hey, Esther, yes. She was always the child in school where every report card was, JL is a wonderful student, but she just won't stop talking. <laughs> no matter what, she was social all the time. And so I actually, as a parent, was worried about how she would navigate this. And I can't tell you, every day we have been in here laughing, talking. And so I just wanted her to share what is she doing that's helping her stay in such a positive mindset when I know she is a social butterfly. And those of you, you who know her know that I'm telling the truth. So talk, Jay, what, what is helping you? stay in such a positive place so i know that for college for everyone knows that college is the years of our lives where like you have the most fun you get to do whatever you want because you're on your own <laughs> so, so of course there's a social side of it but then of course it's the side of you have to start preparing for your career and your life so um obviously this year i just turned 20 so I'm on my adult side of my life now. So I had to start preparing for like my career and like um, the rigorousness of what I'm gonna do after undergrad. So like having this time to actually make sure I'm starting to focus on how serious my work has to become as opposed to the social part of my life. 
has been really helpful. So like, I know that not everyone likes to do work, but it's like, if you focus all your energy into the work, then you're distracted from the terribleness that may be mm -hmm. said in the media. So it's mm -hmm. like, if you're focusing on the work, you're ultimately bettering yourself because you're pushing yourself. So as you better yourself, you don't really focus on the negativity that could affect you because you know that you're bettering yourself on your own. And so I really hear you actually making the decision that I'm going to shift my priorities. Mm -hmm. Even though your nature is one to be social, you decided inside mm -hmm. that this, I'm going to take advantage of this time to really focus on my goals and career. And so what has, a, has helped you spiritually, mentally, in your routine to, to wake up in such a positive attitude in the mornings? I actually um, have tried to incorporate like doing yoga and like morning meditation time. Like when I'm getting dressed, I'll listen to music. And like at night, I'll try to do stretching and yoga just to like, after all the work, you do want to wind down to be able to like, you know, put a rest to the work until you start the next day. So like having that time just to wind down your body, wind down your mind, of course, praying to God and, you know, asking for a change, but being content with what's, being, what's happening in your life right now. So just having those morning wake ups and then nightly wind downs. So again, a routine, and we talked about this yesterday, that there are six areas that our habits can, um, are, being, are associated with depression. And that's movement, that's nutrition, sleep, healthy relationships, rumination, and relaxation breathing. And I've heard JL share two of them. One, rumination, she decided to shift from getting caught up in being upset about not having the fun of being at college, made the mental decision, I'm going to stop that tape. I'm going to stop running that tape and start a whole new tape. Let me look to the future and plan for the future and use this time of rest and being at home to actually better, you said career, she said the whole career work. She said, I'm going to use this time to focus on my career. And then she, she identified what in her routine. Her um, routine of actually doing yoga, relaxation, both in the morning and in the evening. And being able to do that consistently has helped you wake up. If you could give any young person who is out there right now. Um, and I have to be honest, when I am coaching clients and working with parents and students, there are some young people who are really struggling, who are really, um, if I dare say, depressed and, and feeling stuck and disconnected. What tip, what advice would you give them to get them out of that stuck emotional place. Yeah, so to piggyback off that, I have had personal experiences where I do have friends right now that are um, pretty frustrated with the fact that we're not at school and they're going to the extent of, well, we all know that the Lord is gonna come back. We don't know when, but he's gonna come back, but they're going to the extent of talking about, oh, this virus is gonna end the world. Why? What's the point of doing anything? The world is ending. Da, 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 da. So they're just taking this being inside and having this time to work on themselves as something that's something terrible. So having me not feel that way has been a little difficult because, you know, trying to balance their understanding, but my understanding isn't meeting up. So I would say that, like, considering we're such a mediafy generation like take this time to learn what it's like to not be so mediafy cuz mm -hmm. like if you improve yourself from not being mediafy then you're more aware and observant and you can be all that much better of a citizen cuz i feel like my generation like we talk a lot about like being better citizens cuz we're not 
too much of a fan of our president. So it's like, we want to know how to make our society better, but then we don't really act like we could make our society better. So I feel like if we had the chance to just use this time to become more observant of ourselves, our surroundings, and like all that's going on, as opposed to being so what's in the media, what's this, what's that, what's this, oh, being connected all the time, then it's like, I think you can help yourself not be so mm -hmm. depressed by yeah. this time. So turn turn off the media. Yeah. <laughs> Get Disconnect from the media yeah. and actually begin to be more observant. Mm -hmm. Be more aware of what's around you, of your relationships, mm -hmm. of your connections. And that can then begin to help you access and think about things bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. Who can you be beyond this moment? Mm -hmm. And who can you begin to help? So really thinking about what are some opportunities of things that you can do that don't have anything to do with media, the news or television and have it become something bigger than you. Well, I'm so pleased that my baby girl <laughs> said yes, that she would uh, come on and take a part of this challenge. So I'm encouraging you, be a part of our challenge. It is 30 days. The hashtag is take 30 FCLG. Our challenge is take a picture of you doing something for 30 minutes a day that brings you joy. Take a picture of it, put it on social media, shift the negativity, just as JL said, shift the negativity of all of the negative stuff in the news media. Let's bring some joy to the news feeds and you would be amazed, just as Jay shared, her spirit becomes contagious to her friends because of how she is approaching life. You can do the same thing. You never know when your picture is just the picture that somebody needed to see to shift their whole mindset. This is a joy movement. 30 days of joy in our fearless calendar. We are ticking off the days. I wanna see your picture, tag it for us, um, Virgil Jackson, show me on Facebook, hashtag take 30, F-C-L-G, Fearless Conversations of a Limitless God. Challenges on, tag your it. We got it done tonight. We love you. See you tomorrow for the next Joy Conversation.